You know we're speaking the same language even if we come from very different countries And this language is rock and roll And you're rocking guys and girls Guten Tag, it's Rich from Hughes and Kettner and this is the Frankfurt Commerce Bank Arena and we are here for Rocking 1000. That's right, we brought 50 Black Spirit 200 amps and 15 crazy YouTubers to play 18 songs in front of 20,000 people with a band of 1000. So what are you waiting for? Let's go in and have a look. Follow me. So what you can hear now is the first rehearsal. It's Friday, so we've got like two, three or four hours of rehearsals going through the set with the guitarist. That's what you can hear in the background. Later we'll get in with the bassists and the drummers and do the whole rhythm section together. Let's walk in and have a listen to what they're doing and see how it sounds. Follow me. performing in front of thousands and thousands of people but the thing that you're actually realizing in these days is that it's a lot more than this it's about friendship it's about making friends it's about finding a common language you know we're speaking the same language even if we come from very different countries and this language is rock and roll and you're rocking guys and girls so thank you very much Keep on rocking and see you tonight. It's Saturday morning of the Rocking 1000 weekend and at the moment what's going on is that our amps and the amps from all the rehearsals that you saw yesterday along with all the drum kits and along with all the musicians are being transferred across to the Commerzbank Arena itself and that's where the rehearsals will be Saturday evening. So what we thought we'd do is head across Frankfurt to this wonderful vintage guitar shop Guitar Point Vintage Guitars. We've taken the YouTubers in there to give them a look at some of the best and most in-demand guitars from the last 50 years. Let's go inside, take a look, and see what we find. Follow me. They also have t-shirts. <laughs> Here it is. So this is Guitar Point, just outside of Frankfurt, Germany. We've already been inside and taken a look at what's on offer. Guitars have been played, wallets have been opened, but no one has spent big bucks yet. That could change at some point. I reckon what we're going to do is go around and ask some of the guys what they've seen and were we, H and K, to supply each of them with a guitar for the Rocking 1000 show, which one would they choose and why? My first victim is going to be Mr. Phil McKnight. Can we perch down here? I'll come between Phil and Steve. Uh. 
I saved your GoPro. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so my question would be, if Hughes and Kettner was to sponsor you with one instrument with which to play the Rockin' 1000 show from this store, what would you choose? Oh, you mean a like a guitar, an instrument? Yeah. You can choose a bass. Oh. All right, well, all right. What, okay, let's make it simpler then. What one instrument have you seen today that you would take, money aside? Uh, I like that Cabernita Telecaster with the uh, TV Jones pickups. Yeah. yeah, it was full, it sounded great. It won't make any noise. I can make that rock. Yeah. Yeah. And it's within your budget? Yeah, it was within the budget. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. It was like 1,500 euro. Really? Yep. That's not bad. So that was like a modern yeah, custom. Yeah, it's more modern guitar, but it was used, but it was more modern. But it was made in the USA and yeah. really nice. All right, cool. Yeah. There we go. So that's Phil McKnight done. Steve from Boston. Hello. Welcome to the Hughes and Kettner channel again. If we were to give you one guitar with which to play the Rocking 1000 show that you've seen here in Guitar Point, what would you pick and why? I would pick the 1954 Stratocaster uh, for two reasons. One, uh, it's the first year, which makes it kind of special. But two, it had the most wonderful V-neck on it, which uh, is a sort of a dying art with Fender. They don't do the, the hard Vs like they do in that very first year. And I love that. As soon as I picked it up, I was like, oh, that is the neck right there, that hard V-neck. You know, um, I played a whole bunch. Uh, the 62, I'd say, was a close second, but I'm still going 54. All right, 54 for you. Let's, uh, let's go across the way to this beautiful gentleman sitting opposite me. Vlad. Oh, no. <laughs> what about you, sir? Which guitar would you pick were Hughes and Kettner to sponsor you and give you one instrument to play the Rockin' 1000 show? From here. Or any instrument. From here. From here. Otherwise, the video is kind of pointless. Kind of pointless, yes. Well, I'm in it, so it is definitely a pointless video now. I'm sorry. Yep. You've done that to yourself. Um, not anything authentic. I wouldn't do an authentic one. Okay. Um, problem is with the strats, they only have single coils, and I would need an HSS, which isn't vintage. Oh, uh, if, we, if we rule out the authentic ones, and then. Oh, man. Uh, pick two if you can't pick one. Uh, the the Carbonita one. The, the, the Carbo there's a Carbonita Tilly that... Uh, That's exactly what Phil McKnight just chose. Yeah, because A, I love you guys and I don't want you to spend that much money and it's only 1600 bucks. And, and, and that's... And that's... Uh, thank you, Uwe, thank you. Um, and that's... Uh, you look good. That's humbuckery but with a lot of brightness. Um, that'll be a good guitar for the Rockin' 1000. Yeah. And then you still love me because you didn't spend that much money. Absolutely. Yeah, literally, that's the one that I would pick. That's the winner so far, the Cabernita. Capic Studios, Vlad. Greetings. How you well, doing? Hello there. Well, hello there indeed. If we were to get one guitar for you from this store to play the Rockin' 1000 show with, which one would it be and why? Mm, there's a lot of amazing guitars, but I think I would go for a tele because I'm a tele guy nowadays. Okay. Uh, we played the 58 top loaded, that, that white telly over there. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty amazing. So I want to say that one. Yeah. I play white telly, that's a white telly, but it's just slightly older than me and my telly combined. <laughs> so yeah, that one. Yeah. All right, cool. Good choice. The telly's winning like three to one so far, yes. or four to one, or something like that. All right, let's, uh, let's go for a little wander around the store and find some more victims. Just over here, we've got some guilds and some miscellaneous instruments, some Rickenbackers and stuff like that. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh, yeah. And a classic guitar. Jay, yes. let me ask you a question yes. for Hughes and Kettner channel. Okay. Of all the guitars in Guitar Point, mm -hmm. were Hughes and Kettner to sponsor you with one to play the Rockin' 1000 show, which one would you choose I'd and why? <laughs> you know what guitar I want. I know exactly <laughs> which one that, you want. Is that 58 uh, top loader telly. That's, 
That's just Christmas in a bottle right over there, buddy. That's my favorite guitar here. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. going to have to fly Va Vlad for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know what? yeah? Me and him. It's going to be point to point, man. <laughs> that's the best. That's my favorite guitar here. That was, uh, there's a lot, and that's a lot of guitars here, too. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm biased, though, because yeah. I already had a pre brain wiring to you like did. that guitar. So. Oh, I know. Right. Another one for a telly. <laughs> this is interesting. Let's go to Metal City now. And Jack from Toxic Eternity, who I wasn't sure what he would find in a store such as this. So we have, oh, we have EMGs. We have active EMGs in a '88 ES335. So I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, that's unreal. Yeah. It sounds great, man. Like listen to this. <laughs> So of all the guitars in here, if we were to sponsor you with one to play the show with, this is the one you'd go for? Or have you seen something else you would pick instead? It, it would have to, real. It would really have to be this one. Yeah. I mean, like I get, I get down with active pickups, yeah. and you know, as beautiful as these classic guitars are, I mean, this one is also a classic guitar. This, this is like the tool that I would need to to play the riffs that I play, you yeah. know. So, but it still has that like that classic feel though. So it's like the it's it's kind of tripping me out honestly because it feels like unplugged. It would be like a like yeah, you know, classic guitar, but then you turn. On. <laughs> I would definitely have to go with this one for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that is the is it an eighty five three three five with the MGs in it? Eighty eight. Yeah. Eighty eight. There we go. So that one's a younger vintage at a mere thirty one years old. Let's head back out into the main room. See who else we can find. I'll just close the door. This, by the way, this is the telly that Jay and Vlad were fighting over. Yeah. So this is Fred from Guitar Point. We're just shooting a little documentary for the HK channel, just saying what we're doing and stuff. Yeah. Thank you for like taking the time to look after all these YouTubers and give us a rest for about two hours, because normally we're looking after them. No problem. Can you tell us a little bit about this guitar? Because we asked all the guys so far, if you could pick one guitar to play the Rocking 1000 show this weekend, which one did you choose? And Tellys are pretty much winning, like the Cabernita in there yeah. also has a couple of votes, but there's a lot of love for this one. Why do you think that might be? That might be because it's a rare top loader Telecaster. Yeah. That means it doesn't have the drilling strings through body construction and the strings goes just through the bridge. So um, this will sound different than a normal Telecaster. Yeah. So you have like... It's a very twangy tone already played naturally. It rings really. Right. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's pretty lightweight and um, very resonant guitar. So, um, yeah, if you are looking for, for that vintage uh, tally sound, then you can go wrong with a top loader. Yeah. So these were only made between mid of 58 until early 59, and okay. we had three of these so far. <laughs> and, okay. yeah. So this is a 58 model? This yeah, one. right. This is a 58. Very nice instrument. So we can see why it's popular. That's for sure. So um, what also interesting is on that guitar, you have still the original frets, which is pretty rare on a. It's never had a refret. It never had a refret. So um, those frets were very tiny back then. Yeah. And what most people don't know is that um, the same frets like these aren't available on the market anymore. So all newer frets are different than these old frets. You mean like in the profile or in the materials that they the use? The material and, and, and the profile. Oh, so yeah, okay. um, today there are several companies that try to remake this, this old fret yeah. wire, but this is very difficult yeah. because it's also very difficult to measure yeah. because obviously they were used and which um, I do would take, yeah. you, sure. you know. But um, we are very surprised because uh, about 80% of our instruments still have the original frets. Yeah. So, and we leave that always like that because we leave it up to the customer. We say, if the customer wants new fret, we want to put in the frets the customer wants. Yeah. That's why we do that. Yeah. Fascinating. I know you're a guitar player yourself. Let's yeah. say you came with us to Rocking 1000 and you could pick for yourself then one of the guitars in your store. Which one would you pick? Obviously, the 59 Les Paul. But <laughs> 
because I'm a Les Paul player. Oh, but yeah. I, I myself, I play a 68 Les Paul Custom, uh -huh. which I got from Matthias Jabs from the Scorpions. Oh, yeah. And this is a killer guitar too. So I would play my own guitar, yeah. I think. Yes. Okay. I awesome. would. Well, thank you very much for this information. Yeah. We'll continue on our way. Yeah. Ask some more guys what they would want. Let's find somebody else. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Just, just for the record. Just for you guys. We're, we're not, we're, we're not gonna, gonna go. go. But we, we are, go we are gonna go. You are not gonna go, but we're gonna go. Oh, you mean you're gonna leave the store? I thought yes. we were gonna fight. Ah, uh, no. Yeah. Please do. No, no. <laughs> Wait, I need Harry before you go. Yeah. Harry and a guitar. Hello. I found you without a guitar. Mm -hmm. Theoretical question, yeah, some of it is wrong. But let's say Hughes and Kettner were to sponsor you one guitar from here to play the Rocking 1000 show with. Which one would you pick and why? 62 Strat over there. The Sunburst one. The Sunburst, not the really aged one, this one here. This one here. I played it before and the attack, the immediacy, the dynamic range is insane, yeah. especially for a Strat nerd like myself and if Hughes and Kettner would then offer to sponsor it for at home then I would do that as well yeah and if you're a good boy this weekend we'll consider maybe thinking about it not <laughs> yeah exactly yeah cool pick anyway and that is the first strat that someone has picked so far let's m let's move on down the line guitar bros Please, yes. welcome to the Hughes and Kettner channel. Huh. We're Hughes and Kettner documentary, right? Indeed, yeah. Ah. We're asking all of you dudes, after your trip to Guitar Point, if Hughes and Kettner were to sponsor you one guitar each to play the Rockin' 1000. If you had that money, that available cash, huh? Which, of course, we do, based on Black Spirit 200 sales alone. Which guitar would you pick and why? Okay. Well, the thing with all these, these vintage guitars is that I could... I could never... I'd be too scared to play them, so I couldn't ever own one. Yeah. But there is a Fender Custom Shop like, is it Shergold Green? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the Strat. Yeah, just the Strat, that's it. Or... Did you see that it comes with that Shergold Green amp in the corner as well? Does it? Yeah. Oh, For that yeah, price? Yeah, well. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Or the 80s Strat with the matching headstock up there. <laughs> of course he will. Yeah, oh, yeah. that just says Strat on the headstock, not Stratocaster. It's easier to say. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's my choice. Uh, Wonderful. Joss? So... <laughs> I need to I need to put a disclaimer into this whole thing before I like go into the the depths of the experience I had today. So the, I have a tattoo, right? And it's it says 59 and 51. Unfortunately, they didn't have a 51 uh telly in today because they sold it literally a few days ago. Really? They had a 51 and a 52, right? But the the earliest they've got now is a 58, which I wasn't that bothered about. But if we just take a stroll over here. Can I give you the mic, Joss? Yeah, yeah. So if we just take a stroll over here. Um, I had the opportunity to try, uh, I had the opportunity to play a 59 Les Paul today. Um, an orig all original 1959 Gibson Les Paul, the one in the middle. Um, so for me, to experience, to experience something like that was, monumental to me. It was like one of the most important thing that's ever happened to me, ever. Yeah. Um, because the only reason I got a tattoo saying 51 and 59 is because not only are they like the pinnacle for me in terms of like year specific guitars, like if I could, if I had all the money in the world, it would be a 51 no caster and it would be a 59 Les Paul and then I would be happy. But the difference with that, actually finally playing that, because the reason I got the tattoos was instead of saying like, I love guitars, do you know what I mean? I just wanted two numbers that would, uh, I could associate with like something that I, you know, adore in yeah. like more than anything in this yeah. world, apart from my girlfriend, I love you. Um, so playing this today, so thank you obviously so much for bringing us here because this like has completely been one of the most important things that's ever happened to me in my guitar playing thing. So like, I've actually read interviews with a couple of guys who always wanted to play 59s yeah. as well and they were like, okay, they built it up to be such a massive thing in their heads that by the time they played it, it was like, oh yeah, it is, it's just a guitar. Did you have that or was it really, was the legend true for you? Because no, yeah, it, it, yeah. sounded, it sounded massive. Yeah. We should be able to get some footage from somebody else yeah, that we can show you of that. Footage, yeah. So we'll hopefully cut it in. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was, it's everything that encompasses that whole vibe thing. Like, so the guitar didn't play as well as a custom shop 59 Les Paul. Yeah. Um, and, but everything else 
was better. So the entire magic voodoo thing that an old guitar will do for you was completely overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not because I'm like, oh, like, you know, the, the old guitars are better because I'm a true president of modern playing guitars. Um, so in terms of like sound and everything, like it was a heavy guitar, like the weight of the guitar was heavy, but it sounded hollow because the whole point of a 59 PAF was that it sounds like a fat single coil, right? It's a super low output pickup. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. They play a 59 Les Paul in a shop made by a custom shop guitar company, like Gibson Custom Shop. They play it and it goes like boom, like barks at you. Where that doesn't lead you into a full sense of security. It's smooth, it's low output, it's all encompassing, but there's like brightness, there's bottom end, the guitar's heavy, but it sounds hollow. So yeah, it, it was a true, it was a true moment. I, got, I had the old goosebumps and everything, which I showed and you could see my hair standing up and everything. And then when I talk about it, I still get it. And then I played a, then I played a 40s Martin and nearly cried. So yeah, this was, this was a very cool moment for me. Start saving. Yeah, like half a mil. <laughs> sure. So yeah. In a couple of years, yeah, yeah. those YouTube revenues are going to start kicking in soon, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, good sir. No, my pleasure. We'll continue on the tour, which is actually at an end now. Once again, if you're ever anywhere near the Frankfurt, Germany region, Guitar Point is the store. Make sure you check it out. They've got absolutely extraordinary collection of instruments. But now it's time for us to go back to work and the realities of Frankfurt and the Rocking 1000 Stadium. So we'll see you there. It's Saturday afternoon, the day before the Rocking 1000 concert, and I'm sat here in the Commerce Bank Arena now. It might be pretty empty right now where I'm sat, but tomorrow night there will be 20,000 people all up and ready to go for the concert. It's going to be a dress rehearsal tonight, so if we swing the camera around, we'll see the thousand sets of instruments and amplifiers up and ready to go. There's 350 guitarists, 300 drummers, a few hundred bassists, there's keyboards, there's a brass section, and there's singers. They've all practiced alone in their different groups up to now. Later tonight, they will run through the whole set list for tomorrow together in preparation for the big day tomorrow. Let's go and get a few more impressions of that. Using Kettner Black Spirit 200 is incredibly loud. Wear earplugs and use at your own risk. Your playing experience may not match that of Hughes and Kettner and its endorsing artists. Side effects may include rock stardom, platinum records, and a lifetime of endless knob tweaking. It's Saturday afternoon, we're just about ready to have the first full band rehearsal for the Rocking 1000. And I've just got very lucky because standing with me are Fabio and Stefano. So we have the originator behind the Rocking 1000 idea, the man who started it all, and the guitar guru for the event. Was uh, struggling, trying to teach me some songs because I want to definitely play, but I'm not really good at my guitar. You'll get it, don't worry. So ju just tell me very briefly, like your idea behind this event and your impression so far with the Frankfurt version. 
Well, the idea of Rocking 1000 is like gathering musicians of any kind, coming from any country with different skills, uh, coming from different backgrounds, putting them together, teaching them the how to stay together and create something huge all together. It's all, it's all about, I, I always use the word together because togetherness is the, is the base and the spirit of Rocking 1000. And we want to prove that when there's many people doing the same thing, speaking the same language, which is music and rock and roll, we can fill up stadiums. Yeah. And we can, and we're going to do that tomorrow with 20,000 people. Stefano, tell me about your challenges getting 300 guitar players to play the same thing at the same time. Yeah, we had the um, uh, headphones wireless. Yeah. That we, in, in the headphones, there, there are the, the bass with the commands, the click tracks. The click tracks. And all the guitar players play over the click tracks and uh, we are synchronized. Yeah. The very important challenge is to arrange a an easier part because uh, there are a lot of guitar players from different uh, um, uh, with different uh, techniques with different um, skills. skills yeah and so there will be a, a song for every guitar player and what do you think is going to be the result of tomorrow night from the perspective of the crowd what can they expect from a concert like this because this is not a normal concert yeah, I mean, for, this is our first time when we have really, really di many different kinds of musicians and instruments. Yeah. So because we have uh, the bass that w that started in 2015, which is like uh, uh, bass, guitar, drums and singers. Then we had keyboards and then we have strings and we have a brass section. And it's going to be fun to see all these different uh, instruments all together and and we are very excited because having so many musicians our set list can be very rich yeah. and that's what uh, our public can expect something very uh, something huge powerful and rich super so finally it's an 18 song set list it's gonna be like two hours the concert which song are you two personally looking forward to the most tomorrow night my preferred songs I think so Smell like the spirit uh, for the energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What about you? Um, I'm in love with Killing in the Name and, um, and also Born to Run because I'm a, a Bruce Springsteen fan. So uh, that, that's, I, I think I will cry a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're really looking forward to it. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of H&K amps as well supporting the show. We're yeah. looking forward for a great day tomorrow. Thank I you. wish you the best of luck. and. Uh, We'll see you at the rehearsal. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Yep. I said, stop filming me when I pee. Here, <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking in German. <laughs> All right, Steve Stein, as someone, as someone who is very well prepared, how are you feeling about this show right now? Uh, I'm feeling very good about it. I'm very ready to have it be over so I can go to bed, actually. <laughs> Frickin' tired, man. Would you say that uh, of, all, uh, of all the shows that you've played in your life, is this has this one been like an average amount of logistical nightmare or worse or better? Oh, it, I would say, well, worse in terms of us having to sit around and wait for everybody. As far as practice goes, there was really not much to it, but, but just uh, a lot of waiting around, which kind of sucks, but for bigger shows, I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah, and this is the biggest show of the big shows. Yeah, that's right. At least in terms of how many people are playing. Yeah, that's right. All right, Mr. Fastfinger, how are you feeling about the show right now? As someone whose amp is mic'd up. Oh my god. Well, I wish I had knew know that before uh, before yesterday. It, my my amp is going to be mic'd up, so there's a huge responsibility there. Yeah. Yeah, all my mistakes will be, I don't know, nobody will hear it anyway. I don't think it's a huge mess anyway. I went up uh, for a little bit while everybody was playing. I went and took a piss, and then I came down and stood in the stands for a minute. And it just sounds like a big mushy noise mess. And so basically, do whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> That's the spirit. That's the spirit. That's truly the spirit of rock and roll.
So good. 15 minutes before showtime at Rocking 1000, let's head into the stadium. That was it, Rocky 1000 2019 in Frankfurt is over and I have with me the hottest talent of the 1002 <laughs> world record breaking musicians. And I yeah. also have Joss. Oh, thanks. Are you the one? Are, are you the really? <laughs> no, no, it was yeah. you, it was you, uh, it was it you. Was me all along. How was it? Uh, yeah, um, so of all songs, like um, The Verve, I cried my eyes out while I was playing it. Oh. When that played, we were behind the stage and the lights were amazing. That was the thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's not so much the song, but I had my sunglasses on as well, to, you know, to be cool. And the, all the phone lights came on and they were doing it. And I just started crying yeah. because I was like, that's 20,000 people. And I was just like, I genuinely couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God. And I was just talking to Tom just to finish off on our vlog. And I talking about that amount of people and just playing it, I nearly welled up again and I was like, yeah. oh, you pussy. I was like, it was amazing. It was unbelievable. You were pretty skeptical before doing this. How do you feel now? Yeah, just euphoric. Like, that's never gonna, like, when am I ever gonna play Hendrix, Zeppelin and The Who in an arena? When is that ever gonna happen again? Bucket list done. Bucket list done, man. Done. Cheers, sir. Thank you so much to Hughes and Kenner. Obviously, Indeed. for even considering to bring me out, so yeah. yeah. And in the spirit of that, let's clear this shit away and uh, go home. <laughs> yeah, let's go home. Yeah. yeah, let's find somebody else, Vlad. Let's Vlad. Capix hey. Studios. Just hey. played a gig to 20,000 people, and how does it feel? Pretty good. My legs will kill me tomorrow. This yeah, is like, I saw you jumping around. It's like four weeks of worth of exercise in hour, whatever. I have no idea how long it took. Yeah, yeah but that's what's, what's going to happen. That, it was fun. How did it feel like looking across at a sea of 20,000 people and playing those classic songs? Yeah, as just just said, I don't know when this is going to happen again, but man, it's fun. You kind of get those songs in a deeper level when you get to do this because you and how the crowd reacts to them that's why they're classics awesome. and that's why it's so much fun to play awesome <laughs>
That was Vlad. Let's see who else we can find. Look, ever the professional. We got Mr. Steve Stein here. You've just played for 20,000 people and 10 minutes later you're boxing up already. <laughs> yeah. Ever the professional, but how was that? Oh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. It was, um, it was a cool experience. It was cool not only to perform, but it was cool to see how they put the whole thing together. And um, what I enjoyed was just looking around and seeing so many people having a great time. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that maybe don't get a lot of opportunity to perform and things like that, all kind of coming together and just enjoying each other's company, enjoying what's happening. And yeah, it was it was super, super cool. What was the best moment or the best song? Um, boy, that's a tough one. May, uh, probably the first song, probably just the, the start of everything. Either that or maybe, you know, like Seven Nation or Smells Like Teen Spirit because the audience was so participating with it. So that was really cool, yeah. Awesome, well we shall let you clear up. All right. Thank you so much for coming out and doing this for us. Yeah, absolutely, I'm glad to be here, thank you so much. And maybe see you for another next time. We got another happy customer over here. Mika, Mr. Fastfinger, how was that a gig for 20,000 people? You've just come off stage. Tell us about it. Oh, we, we just waxed on and off and uh, I think it was, uh, most of all, it felt like, first of all, we have this Hughes Gettner group here so it felt like uh, the whole week, this, this was like the grand finally, grand fi finally, and uh, I don't know, it, it, it's hard to put it in words, but it, uh, it was something absolutely special. And sometimes I almost forget that there's an audience and so on, that kind of like this is the kind of thing. And then remember, okay, we were supposed to perform for the audience as well. But yeah, there's certain special energy with the whole thing. Yeah, but yeah. I certainly saw you jumping around because we came pretty close and we saw you. What, what was the best moment, the moment that most made you think, oh my God? Uh, I can't pick one moment. I, I just respect all these moments. <laughs> to respect. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, yeah. I, I think towards the end, you start feeling, okay, this is one more song you start feeling kind of like a s s emotional or something but yeah it's special yeah cool Absolutely. thank you very much Mika hey thank you Husa Gettner I'm uh, most happiest for for the whole week but yeah wonderful oh yeah cheers we'll let you clear up let's go and find somebody else if we can Henning yeah. Henning oh, Henning oh, uh, oh Mr. Kettner. indeed we've just Mr. seen Hughes. you play a gig to 20,000 people how was it loud yeah and satisfying I probably have to see my uh, nose, ear, and throat specialist about the ringing in my ear. Have you seen Uwe's very tiny thing? You guys can see it, but I'm looking into a very tiny thing that Uwe's holding. He's used to it. So, um, Apart no. Apart from that, what was your favorite thing about the gig? Ah, uh, the gig. Yeah. That I would have never been here without you guys. So, That's you some Kettner love. I would, I would have been at home on the couch with my dogs and cats watching a rerun of uh, of uh, Big Bang Theory for the 20th time. So uh, this was not Big Bang Theory. This was louder. But without you saying, hey, come and do this, I would have never left my house. And um, also uh, spend time with amazing friends. Music, yeah. Commerzbank Arena. I mean, I play all the freaking time, okay? What, 20,000 people? Fuck that. I'm see, I mean, uh, Houston Kettner, I mean, what? Uh, you know, but these people, I mean, not Trey, but everyone else. I mean, Mika, you know, I, l look at this guy. Look at this Finnish man. I would have never made a new friend without Houston Kettner. So the thing is, Houston Kettner, apart from building great amps, they unite people. Houston Kettner brings people together. Through the power of amplification, we unite across borders. Have I given you enough bullshit? Yeah, that was beautiful. Now please go and clear up so we can go home. Okay. All right, let's find somebody else while the camera still has batteries in it. Actually, it's producing usable material. <laughs> Harry, Harry, Hello. Mr. Holden, Harry and a guitar, seen without a guitar again for the second time in the video. Yeah, you've just played a gig for 20,000 people though. How was it? Overwhelming, Fun. weird, wonderful, magical, chocolate factory. Pretty good choice of adjectives. You were one of the ones who was a little bit skeptical before, maybe. So have you changed your mind now? Yeah, it was great. It was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Um, the, rehearsals the, the rehearsals were good, but then having that crowd reciprocating to what you're playing really made it a lot more fun. 
What was the best moment or song? Um, probably the medley at the end. Oh, yeah. Playing Hendrix, Zeppelin in a massive stadium to Lloyd's people is always good. Yeah. When's the next time you'll play for 20,000 people? Probably never. Or maybe at a future Rocking 1000 event? Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we'll let you clear up. Cheers, Harry. Let's go and find Jack at the back there. I had, to let, I had to let my hair back down. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. How was that? Dude, that was freaking awesome. <laughs> that was that was amazing. I saw you head banging with the best of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, gotta gotta utilize the the tools that I that I have, I guess, you know. But I, I also just couldn't help it. That was like that was insane. So. so you were caught up in the moment of it all, yeah. Yeah, no, it was amazing. I mean, like, I, I'd say my favorite part was like definitely when the uh, they all had their lighters out or whatever they were. I think it was like phones or lights or something, but yeah, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah, yeah we, we were like behind the stage at that point because we did a tour of it and it just looked awesome, like a sea of twenty thousand lighters or lights or whatever it was. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, like, I've been to some concerts where I was part of it, but like being on this part of like being actually like the performer and seeing it, it was just like unreal. So it was awesome. Did you expect it to be this awesome? Uh, I, I kind of like, I didn't really know what to expect, honestly. I mean, like, I heard it was this, oh my God, that's amazing. I, I heard it was this awesome, but like, I just really, it's, it, was, it was hard to put it all together, you know what I mean? Like, I was just trying to go into it just being like, let's see what it is, you know? So it definitely was a memorable experience, and yeah, yeah it was exceeded all expectations that yeah. I had. And now you've played to 20,000 people in a stadium in Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah, I was telling Trey, I mean, we should all honestly just quit our jobs because, you know, we're pretty much rock stars now, so. <laughs> all right, well, I shall leave you to clear up. This is probably the last time you won't have a roadie to be carrying your massive rig around for you, so oh, what? enjoy it. Well, I'm glad you told me this now before I quit my job, so. <laughs> Cheers, Jack. Right, thank you. Let's go find these two guys over here. Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh. You've just played to 20,000 people in Germany. How was it? 22,000. 22,000, not to split hairs. Does anyone know? Of musicians, 1,002. 1,002. I don't know how many people it was in the audience, but it was big, wasn't it? It was big. Seven. It was more than seven. It was more than seven. What was the best moment? Um, I think for me, when we first walked in and saw all the people, I was like, wow, this is this is quite an event, you know? And then when they had all their phone lights going, you know, the sea of stars, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, this is what it's like to be on the other side of that, you know? Because yeah. you're so used to being the one putting the lights up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then when the audience was so receptive a few times, you know, um, we just finished up a tune and like the roar of the crowd, it was just like, they, and we would start a song, and they would break into massive applause. And we got standing ovations a couple of times. It was, it was quite an event. It went, it went. It was a lot more relaxing than I thought it would be. I thought I'd be more nervous. Um, and I think it was the audience being so friendly that sort of was like, "Wow, we're in good company." Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, we were back round at the back of the stage at that point because we took a tour of the stadium. It oh, right, looked amazing. I tell you, it, it sounded amazing. I heard some of the footage that someone had taken up in the balcony, and I gotta say, it sounded amazing. We were so worried because when I think when the roof was closed, there was a lot of reverb going on. It was sort of mushy, but now that they opened the roof, and thank God it didn't rain. <laughs> we had we had pouring rain earlier today, and no rain tonight, and that was huge because you know, it would have um, you know electricity and water doesn't really mix that well. <laughs> It does not. You got no. that right. Well, it does, but not to our benefit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, we'll let you yeah. go and clear up. Phil, Absolutely. what about you? What was your best moment? What oh. you treasure the most from this? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know what it was? It was the, the sea of lights. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know why? It was because it felt more personal. You know what I mean? And uh, the event felt... Um, it's, it's weird. For something that was so big, there's so many musicians and so many people... Felt like a giant family reunion. You know what I mean? It was just really cool. Um, I could see why this is gaining popularity and getting so huge so fast, without a doubt. I don't think it takes more than a second to figure out why they're they're doing so well. So you can see this happening in America in future. Yeah, absolutely. I would imagine, especially after talking to a lot of the people that were here, it gets infectious fast. The people will come, keep coming back. You know what I mean? I could see where you know the first question. I think. Uh, 
uh, Jay Leonard was, would you do it again? And I go, I don't know if I could say I would do it again, but I would definitely be up for it. You know what I mean? So I can see coming back, and I can imagine a lot of people would want to come back and do it. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for taking the time and uh, having the patience to do this with us. And yeah, maybe we'll do it again sometime. I'll leave you to go and clear up then, and we'll go and find one, one last victim if we got him. Jay. I'm going to find Jay. Here he is. It's Jay. Well, hello. Jay Leonard Jay. You've just played a gig to 20,000 people, and how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty loose. Um, getting ready for the second set. Oh, yeah. Is there a second set? Not tonight, by the look of it. But. All right. Well, it was, a, it was actually a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, most, best part of it was actually uh, watching everybody, all the YouTubers, nice. and how much fun they were having. Yeah. I think that was the best part, I think. Just seeing everyone loosen up and have a great time. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. But we got real close, and you were totally into it. What was the one moment that you will take away and cherish forever about this event? Oh my gosh! The one moment I'm gonna take. It's the one moment. Um, no, no, it, no. Why? Because it just goes by in a giant blur. I just remember um, noise, and then there was no noise, and now you have a microphone in front of my face. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotta get those raw emotions. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun, and uh, it was a pleasure to be part of the Hughes and Kettner team, be part of this whole event. Uh, thank you. That was awesome. Wonderful. Cheers, Jay. We shall go and let you clear up. I think we've done everybody now, pretty much. Trey, 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 Gear Gods. I'm about to be interviewed. Yeah, I'm just going to interview Excuse very me. quickly. My adoring public. Yeah, you've just played a gig to 20,000 people. I would like to know how you feel. Oh, uh, so much relief, to be honest. Uh, I feel like, mm, how do I put it? I, there was so much buildup and so much work to go into it, and it was over so fast. And uh, for that, I'm actually grateful, um, because even though it was really, really, really fun, um, it's a bit taxing on the knees, and um, I feel like if I had to do this every night, I would die slowly. Um, I don't know how people do it uh, in rock bands, touring rock bands. I, well, how do I feel? How do I feel? What are you, my mother? I pretty much I feel great. That's what I have been for this past week, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much your mom. Basically, <laughs> you know, I I wouldn't sign up for that job. I don't envy you at all. I'm a pain in the ass. Um, I yeah, mostly I feel I feel like this nice relief, not a relief like off. Oh, glad glad that shit's over. Just like a nice like you know, a nice calmness. Like because there's a lot of anxiety involved in learning 18 songs. I have never in my life played 18 songs in a show. This was crazy. I should have been way more prepared, yeah. but I pulled it off, and if I screwed up, no one will ever know. So there's that relief, there's that part. I mean, Henning would know, but he was right. He was probably the only person in the whole stadium who could actually hear me, <laughs> because he was right in front of me, and all I could hear was the guy behind me. Oh, yeah. um, so I know what you did, bro. guy who's not there. I know. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you blow it. Uh, yeah, uh, this was great fun, a uh, gloriously wonderful time, um, and I'm going to sleep for a year. So, good night. Good night, and thank you so much. You are welcome. Yep. All right, that reminds me that we haven't seen Isaac yet. Isaac from Gear Gods. I'm calling Isaac from Gear Gods. Here he is. Rich. The last one. Oh, how You're, are you? I'm probably less tired than you. I didn't just play a gig for 20,000 people. That's the difference. How are you feeling? I'm good. Heavy breathing. I'm good, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm so good. I feel exhilarated, and I can't believe that just happened. And I'm ready for two to five beers, and then bedtime for a thousand years. Sounds pretty good. What was the best song or the moment that you will take away with you from now? I think the moment it hit me was when we were coming through the tunnel, yeah. and we came out enough to see the second row of people. Because yeah. the first row was like, that's a lot of people. The second row, I'm like, that is more. That is even more people. Um, God, I mean, just the first song, ACDC, Highway to Hell, that was pretty sick. Um, teared up a little bit during uh, Don't Look Back in Anger. That's like one of my favorite songs in the world, and we're all just like rocking out. And it was just like, just good, wholesome fun. Couldn't ask for anything more, man. Music can get, can get kind of pretentious sometimes, and this was just like good, clean fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in front of all these strangers, so. 20,000 strangers. Yeah, yeah. It was great. It was great. All right. Well, thank you so much again for having the time and the patience to join us this weekend to play the Black Spirit. Hughes and Kettner fucking rules. You guys are incredible. They've taken care of any anything we've ever needed amidst all this chaos. They've fed us. They've coordinated everything, communicated everything. I can't say enough good things about you guys. You guys fucking rule, dude.
And to finish it off, we're going to give him the requested two to five beers. So thank you once again. We shall let you clear up. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. All right, folks, I think we've touched everybody right now. That will be the end of my documentary for today. This has been Rocking 1000 2019 in Frankfurt at the Commerzbank Arena. I hope you enjoyed this massively long documentary with our trip all the way from St. Gwendal to Frankfurt, then our massive shopping spree that didn't really end up as a shopping spree in Dakar, Guitar Point, that amazing store. Don't forget to check that out. Rocking 1000. We're not the only channel that's going to be featuring it, of course. It's going to be all over. There's going to be an official documentary, so if you want to watch more, check it out on the Rocking 1000 site. Make sure you check out the Black Spirit 200, which was the amp that 50 people were using who are in the band. Check us out on HughesandGetner.com, and we shall see you in the next video. Tschüss and bye. What do you think, Rich? How was the show? It was alright. Hmm?